Number eight, David Russell, American Short Tracker. And uh, David, we were talking just a little bit ago about the way things change tonight, air temperature, track temperature and stuff. We always hear about that with the big NASCAR cars, but really with the short trackers, does that affect the yeah. way your car handles and drives? Oh yeah, it affects a lot. When the air temp changes on us, it takes it reduces the power out of us. And we, if I'm going from warm to cold, it changed we lose power and if we don't get the right temp in the motor or right fuel mixture we don't get the power out of the car and tonight it started out hot and warm we were fast we we're good and the air temp changed and of course i lost tents off because the motor changed and i didn't have enough fuel i had too much fuel so so you were fast in qualifying yep. and then when you got to the heat races it started to change on you. It started, yeah, I qualified fifth and the air changed and it just, I lost power. I had too much fuel. I needed to bring the, take the fuel away to get the power back, to get the more, more heat in the motor. And So by the time we got to the feature race, how, how were you? Were you able to uh, dink on it a little bit and get it tweaked to where you wanted it? We tweaked a little bit. It just, how the night went, it was going too quick and we didn't have enough time to change a lot of stuff like we won. I was happy, but it was, it could be better, but we'll get her next week and, and work on it more okay. hopefully get it faster great hey tell me something uh, t tell all our viewers what is this dice that they roll at the the opening ceremonies they roll this dice and they call it the invert what is that all about well, the invert is it inverts for the feature where the top six cars who qualified it, when we roll the dice it's plus two and it helps invert the feature where it puts the six goes towards the front and it just makes the faster guys work Herself through the front, and sometimes it helps the slower guys who can start off front and hopefully give them a chance to try to win. And that's what the invert is it's just more cars, it's more put the faster guys farther to the back. And that's what the invert is with the number lower. So it's a chance just to make it fair for uh, everybody and somebody that may not have all the horsepower that another driver has, it gives them and it just kind of balances out those top six. Correct, yeah, it helps the slower guys, the little, the little guys out and tries to give him the little shine look he's leading the feature and until the fast guys come and it helps him out and sometimes it don't well appreciate you uh, telling us about that because it is one of those things that you see it happen all the time and if you don't know what it is so well thanks a lot appreciate it and uh, we'll see you out there real soon again yeah right. so the first time i ever drove a late model here at rockford speedway he didn't have his right i was on. i was running third you've been and, hit by uh, Matt yeah i've been hit hard by matt berger first time ever running a late model and I drive off into three, there's like five laps left to go. And I'm just minding my own business thinking, all right, first time in a late mile, having a good run here. This is pretty good. And here comes Matt Berger, a red and blue car, Gotta like go. 98 something or another. Had to go. And uh, Leading points. drove in and hit me so hard, I pooped myself a little bit. <laughs> and uh, he got around me, so that was good. Not really for me, but for Did him. You hit the wall? No, I didn't, I didn't hit, I about hit the wall. Good, but, after the race, I asked him, and he goes, well, it's your first race. I couldn't let you beat me. And I was like, well, that's the worst excuse ever. <laughs> you beat me so, a lot of times after that. So. Yeah, I did. So it worked so, out. It's okay. Yeah. It's it just the first out, time. Yeah. Well, there you have it. You learned something. I, right? I learned. I learned yeah. that's the Rockford move right there. Yeah. So, yeah. Kyle Shearer and <laughs> Kyle <laughs> Shearer and Matt Berger. There you go. a unique place here at the Rockford Speedway. We're in the beer garden, standing here with Susie Deary. This is a true treat. Susie, we've been wanting to do this with you and talk to you about this grilled cheese thing. So after every race, it's kind of a tradition that that grill over there gets fired up and you guys make grilled cheese sandwiches. What? Tell me what it's about. What, where'd that come from? Um, started a couple of years ago. Misty Garman, who was a fan, talked about the grilled cheese line at, I think it was Plover Speedway and that well we could do that so we did we started it the first year we had gourmet sandwiches with fancy cheese and meats and every, you know it was just too much so we did the your basic cheese and bread and and it's a hit uh-huh they're made with love that's what makes them good 
There's a hit. I've watched uh, driver after driver, fan after fan walk out of here with a sandwich and a little basket. So you get a sandwich and a pickle and chips. Chips if you want. Chips if you want. We yeah. started on a little home griddle, like you make pancakes on at home, that's like yay by yay. And you could do three, four at the most at a time. And then it got crazy, then we had two of those, and we'd be blowing fuses, so we ended up with the, the big and gas get the griddle. big griddle, yeah. And it's, really it's almost a two person job when it's a big night where we're selling 15 to one person. That's fantastic. And one thing we want to remind everybody, this weekend, coming up a week from tonight, next Saturday, it's kind of a big night for Rockford Speedway. What's going on? It is our 70th anniversary celebration, celebrating 70 years of racing, entertainment. Carrying on a legacy that was left by your dad. And um, just fantastic family that uh, has racing throughout you know, their blood and just really wants to put on a good show for the fans. So we want to encourage everybody to come out next Saturday here to the Rockford Speedway and join the Deary's and everybody in celebrating 70 years of short track racing here at the Rockford Speedway. I know Speedway. that everybody watches the flag. I, I watch Flagman. You know, it's always my thing. And not many people will probably know what you're doing, but when you've got that black flag in your hand and you're leaning out over the track and you're pointing with that flag to the wall at this guy, what are you telling him to do? I'm telling him to stay in his lane. He is uh, crossing the line and he's uh, chopping other traffic and that's a no-no. You gotta stay in your lane. If you've got somebody who's coming up on you that uh, is uh, challenging you for position, you have to hold your position. He has to come around you. But you, you've got to give him that opportunity. And, and when you chop or, you know, you're coming out of the corner tight, um, that's that's not a good way to race. It's, it's actually a very poor way to race. I used to watch Tom get really animated up there. I'd see Tom with the flag, and he'd tap his head with that flag. Oh. You know, use your head, guys, you know. And then he'd get down there. I actually watched Tom one night get down off the flag stand oh. in a roadrunner race, stop the roadrunners on the track, and walked out with his flag <laughs> and whacked the front of a roadrunner. And he says, you, use your head. Yeah, yeah, now, yeah. I don't see you doing that, but I no. do see you down on the track. And you're high-fiving the guys before the race starts and all that. You know, when you lean in, what are you telling them before the race starts? When uh, we're all uh, done with opening ceremonies. Opening ceremonies. Um, basically, what I'm doing is I'm making sure that they're race ready making sure that they have their helmet on, their uh, communication system is on, making sure that their car is running, and making sure that they're ready to race because they've been getting ready while the opening ceremonies have been happening. And now the short trackers just want to do the high five thing too, which is really cool. Yeah. But uh, I, as far as I know, I'm the only one that does the, uh, I, I just give them a fist bump, you know, and make sure they're ready to race. And, and I've awesome. done that. I've done that from you know day one. That's kind of just my little staple, you know, that I do. It's awesome. I was thinking about a little while ago. The race starts with you and ends with you. You know, yeah. you tell them when to go and you tell them when it's over. That's so right. Jeff, hey, thanks for uh, coming by. Absolutely. Thanks for visiting with us, and we love having you up on the flag stand. I and, love being uh, there. I really I, do. We know you do. It shows. One, one so. of the things that I do every race night is, and people don't understand why I wear this re uh, white band. It's a white piece of tape. Tom Paul used to do this every race night. And everybody thought maybe he had a wrist problem or something. No, it's I'm gonna write I'm gonna write down car numbers of people I'm gonna talk to I'll after the race. How about that? And that's exactly why he. I always up. thought he was uh, supporting his wrist. Well, Jeff, yeah. thank you so much. What a pleasure to have uh, you, you on Pit Talk TV tonight. Thank you for letting me. Go thank here. you. All right. Yeah.